Hi, today is the day after my core needle breast biopsy. And I guess all in all, it wasn't that bad. I think biopsy, the biopsy gets wrapped up in all the emotions. You're finding out whether you're the 98% of people whose mass is not cancerous or the 2% that is. And that gets all wrapped up with biopsy. Um, I suppose I have to admit at the end of the day, what I'm really upset about is having to go through this maybe 2%. It's, that's stressful. It is. Um, but it gets heaped on the actual act of the biopsy prior to having it. If you've never had one, you might have all this. You, you just, it's a focus, it's a focal point. <laughs> the actual procedure wasn't that bad. Um, unless you really hate needles, then I don't know if you can close your eyes and just not watch it. Certainly that's what I did. I just looked at the ceiling the whole time. Um, and I'm, needles aren't that, much of a problem and just like at the dentist you know they come at you with the needle and you know um you feel a little pinprick and so I was okay with the needles so they put a lot of freezing in um because I told them I've been to the dentist before and I don't need like a tremendous amount more than average but there have been here's your freezing can you feel this yeah I can still feel that well here's a little more freezing so I just told them that ahead of time and he did with that information what what he did <sighs> so I did feel pressure and tugging on the skin he said um, about halfway through he said oh you're one of those patients who start to heal up uh, you, you know before I'm even done and I have to open it up again and that's true um, I heal fast I think you know generally like I'm not a slow healer I'm not an excessive bleeder I'm a get a wound, heal a pretty quick kind of person. And, um, but because my immune system, if that's what it is, or my healing system jumps on things pretty quickly, that's why I didn't want the titanium clip or marker is what I had heard online about it. My biopsy doctor called it a titan titanium bead. And I said, no, I, I don't want that. And he said, um, they used the titanium bead to mark where we biopsied. Um, he says, because sometimes after chemotherapy, um, if the tumor shrinks, we c it helps us tell where the tumor used to be. But he said, because I think there's a good chance this is not a problem, I don't have to leave a bead. Otherwise, I would have insisted on it. So I guess I'm grateful he let me go without the titanium bead because apparently if he thought my fibroadenoma was likely to be cancer, he would have insisted on leaving that marker there for, for um, chemotherapy later, you know, or whatever. Um, so again, this is, I'm fixated on that. Like, otherwise I would have insisted on it is what he said. Like, Who's in charge here, the patient or the doctor? And I think that gets to the root of why I found some of the some of the screening so upsetting is because I don't feel like I'm driving the bus. Like I'm not steering. I'm a passenger in the back seat and we're careening down the road and I've got no say. And I think that's that's why I'm overreacting. I'll admit it. I'm a highly sensitive person. I'm overreacting to this whole screening journey because I'm not driving. The, the doctors are. <laughs> I'm just a cog in the machine now of the whole screening process, including this upgrade to biopsy. Now he did, they did ask ahead of time. He said, and this was neat. Well, actually I was wondering like, did you see my YouTube video? Because like he asked me, he told me right away, you don't have to do this. He said, but if you don't, what we what we would do is we'd check it again in six months, and then we'd check it again in another six months, and then we'd check it again in a year. And then if after two years it hasn't changed, then we wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So you can do this biopsy now, or you can worry about it for two years. And it's like, wow, gee, let me think about it. <laughs> like, 
I'm already on the table. I'm already naked to the waist. I got my pants on still, but I'm no shirt, no bra. I'm already exposing my left breast and there's a sheet covering the other one. And then he's saying, you don't have to do it, but if you don't, then you can just worry for the next two years. You know, so, <laughs> so then I'm like, I, I came this far, fine, do it, just whatever. <laughs> like I consent. Um, so that was funny, you know, like I'm, <laughs> so anyhow, a few needles come in for the freezing and yes, I'm sore. Um, my mass is very close to my breastbone. And yeah, the box, you don't need to click it ahead of time. It's quite loud. And it feels like you hit the bone a few times. So, of course, I got a bruise. Um, but I'll tell you something. Um, I had um, some chronic pain between 2016 and 2019. Um uh, I had gone gluten-free in 2012 and it changed my life. It was transformative and I just felt so much better um, because I'm celiac, so obviously. But I didn't find out until I was 40 years old. Um, so went gluten-free, felt great. But four years of gluten-free, I got, I felt ill again. Um, and it was an invisible illness. Uh, you couldn't see it. Uh, it just hurt all the time. I had... I don't know, inflammation of the stomach lining that just made the bottom of the stomach just seal up like we're not letting anything through. And, oh, you know, like that internal pain is definitely worse than an external bruise because, yes, he took six samples from, so he went in six times and then even said, you're one of those patients that's already, you know, like the, the little incision he made is already closing up, you know, halfway through and he has to open, you know, open it up again um so uh, anyhow so the the out outside bruising actually for me doesn't hurt as bad as like an internal inflammatory joint pain whatever I was going through until I figured out I had to go grain free I guess I grain free became pain free so every single gluten free substitute just I stopped Anything to do, like no more gluten-free or gluten-safe oats, nothing. Grain-free and the pain went away. After, it took a month of clean for me, eating grain-free and the pain went away. Um, so that pain I feel like is worse than this. This is just a bruise, but I have a bruise. Like I went and we got a little bit of snow and I did, you know, pushed a little snow off the porch. Um, my husband's doing the lion's share of the snow clearing, but... Oh, yeah, it's a little sore. But it was survivable. They freeze you. It's like going to the dentist. And going to the dentist can suck. I mean, I've had wisdom teeth out. So, yeah, going to the dentist is no fun. Um, never had a root canal, but, you know, I had an impacted one of the four. Wisdom teeth was impacted. So, yeah. So, yeah, it was. it's no fun. Hurts afterwards, but you're glad it's done. Um, I think really what it... All my anger and all my frustration and even even this otherwise I would have insisted on it it's all to do with how out of control the whole process feels and not knowing the results yet and even though though it's you know only a two percent chance you don't know it's, it's not a zero percent or they wouldn't have been doing the biopsy oh, so anyhow um well what and when he said that uh, we check it again in six months and we check it again and uh and then we check it again, you know, so a two year process of checking again to, before we didn't have to worry about it. I actually said, you know, I wasn't really losing sleep over it, but obviously my doctor was because, you know, I get this call eight days after we said we check it in six months and all of a sudden I'm uh, a biopsy has been ordered. And he said, oh, I don't think that was your doctor. He said, I think that was one of my colleagues here at the hospital. We just wanted to check it because your fibroadenoma, usually fibroadenomas are nice and oval and clean around the edges and you've got like it, yours is irregular. So, and that's true. I mean, I, um, in one of my videos, I said mine's the less common lobulated around the edges, but that doesn't mean it's cancer. 
<sighs> so, uh, so I guess I can't be as mad at my doctor anymore for not including me in the decision because it sounds like the hospital just told her to order it after all. And so then she gets her office person to phone me and say, just warning you, this has been ordered. So I guess it really, you know, but again, if I'm mad at my doctor, it's because I can't be mad at the fibroadenoma. I, it's a thing that's in my body and I can't be mad at it. So I'll be mad at my doctor and I'll be mad that the other, the, the biopsy doctor was really nice and he, he was fine. He did a fine job. And, but I can say like, you know, I can't believe he would have insisted on it. Like, I didn't want a titanium bead left behind in my breast. And I said no to that. And he let me say no to that. But apparently he would have insisted on it had he thought I was actually, you know, starting the path. You know, and I just, that makes me concerned for other people or concerned for the future. Like, how many things do doctors insist on when all our instincts are saying no, 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 no. So I just would hate for anyone to be in that situation. And um, I think some of my hypersensitivity includes just not feeling heard, you know, like having people rolling their eyes about like, oh, give me a break. You know, like you in this drama, this, it's just cancer screening, get over it. But you know, biopsies, no, I'm not going to get over it. And nobody's actually told me that. Um, but I, I, I had a few people in my life that that just aren't as sympathetic uh, to how worked up I get. And um, I I think, like I say, it's a control thing. I could, And that's why the biopsy procedure is uncomfortable for the most part. Um, you know, the actual biopsy itself, you're frozen, you don't feel. It's just like if a dentist gets in there and it's pulling a tooth out, like, ah, that's horrible, you know, so... So the biopsy itself is like no worse than any time I've gone to the dentist. But for a serious, you know, something serious like an extraction, um, you know, it's like I say, it's a little more invasive than fine needle because they make a little incision. And, and then six samples, six times he went back in to the hole he'd made. <laughs> um, but all in all, I think it's just how vulnerable, vulnerable you feel lying on a table. And, and our, that's a vulnerable body part to be exposing and just letting them do what they need to do. And, um, yeah, so it was, it was, it was unpleasant, but it was survivable. And certainly, yes, um, anyone in my life who's ever had a huge medical procedure like hysterectomy or mastectomy, like these are like, yeah, the biopsy is nothing compared to those things. But for me, it was the most invasive thing I've ever been awake for. And it feels pretty vulnerable whew, to just do it. And it, and then he did ask for my consent, but I'm already naked on the table saying, okay, no, I don't want to wait two years. Just do it. <laughs> so, what an experience for which I have nothing to compare it to. That was definitely the most, like I say, I never even had children. Like, I mean, childbirth is a big thing. That's a big deal and <laughs> I did not do that. So um, this was a big thing for me, um, but survivable. And now it's just the waiting game for the pathology report, <laughs> so. Anyhow, so I'd let you know I survived the biopsy. wasn't that bad. And I do recognize that some of my hypersensitivity is about not feeling heard, about not feeling in control and not being able to be mad at the situation. So being mad at individual people along the journey instead. So I guess I can't be mad at my doctor and I'm definitely not mad at the biopsy doctor for suggesting he might have insisted on the titanium bead because in the end he said no you don't have to have that so it is a thing i didn't have to have it okay check back in with you guys later